In this video, we're gonna be testing out reviewing this product. It's a pneumatic shingle cutter. I bought this out on Amazon for like $100. The name is horrible, Pneu Tools. I don't know even how to pronounce that. I think they're trying to go for pneumatic tools, but Pneu Tools is a shingle cutter. I'm gonna be testing it out to see if it actually works or if it's just a hoax. All right, first things first, before we try cutting it, I just wanna take a look and see how this is built. Right off the bat, it feels pretty solid. As far as the construction goes, it feels like there's minimal plastic parts. The blade came separately on this and the way the blade hooks in it pretty much just slides into this slot right here and then there's two set screws right here they're allen key set screws that just get tightened I'm not sure if these will loosen as we cut but we'll see i'm just gonna set these in just tighten them up a little bit now obviously this is a pneumatic tool so you're gonna have to have a air compressor i'm assuming just any regular air compressor it will work you know generally when we're working on roofing job sites anyways we have an air compressor going for our nail guns if you don't own a nail gun you're definitely not going to own this tool so i think it's not an issue to have a compressor and a hose being that we already own it as roofers or if you're doing a roofing project you're probably already investing in one and one thing to keep in mind for this tool and actually any other pneumatic tool any tool that's dependent on air you have to make sure you get the air pressure down correctly or else the tool will not work properly and you'll also start blowing out gaskets you know, a lot of people will complain about yeah this tool broke down on me but in reality they're putting too much pressure on it the recommended psi for this tool is 90. you don't have to be perfectly at 90 you can be at 85 95 100 but if you start running at like a psi of like a 150. The gaskets in this tool is probably not made for that. You're probably gonna blow it out and you'll probably ruin this tool a lot earlier than you should. So make sure to do that. And also just like any other pneumatic tool, drop oil down this every day. The reason for that is so it doesn't rust. Our air compressors generate air as they run and i'm sorry they generate water condensation you don't want that water going into the tool we've hooked it up to our air compressor right now you might hear some background noise as the air compressor runs all right we're gonna be cutting through a just a 30 year or what we classically knew as a 30 year architectural single i'm not sure what brand this is probably an ico shingle but all about the same as far as thickness goes so let's give this a try On my last cut, I felt a little bit of difficulty and slowdown when I was getting to this nailing zone. The nailing zone is obviously the thickest part of the shingle and generally where some type of reinforcement is put. So that's definitely gonna be the hardest part of the shingle to cut. Now I'm curious to see if that was because the air pressure was low. Because at that time my air compressor started running. So now that the air compressor is filled up, I'm gonna give it another try and see if it'll do the low air or just the quality of the tour. <laughs> Yeah, that was definitely due to the quality of the tool. With a high air pressure right now, it's cutting through it like butter. I can still feel a little bit of a slowdown when I get to that nail zone. If you can see like the speed of my hand, the pressure is not changing. Ow. Um. So it kind of like hooks up there for a second, then continues. What I'm gonna try is actually going down the nail zone right now, which is the thickest part of the shingle, and seeing if I can get all the way through. So it definitely cut this like butter, no ifs and buts about it. One thing I do realize right now is, you know, we have a small pancake compressor running and that compressor probably won't be enough air to have this running over and over. After like two or three cuts, the compressor starts going. So if you're cutting through a bunch of shingles, it's definitely gonna be an issue. Or let's say if you're cutting down a valley, if you got like 20, 30 feet to cut down, you probably won't be able to get through it with a small compressor. If you're using like a larger gas powered compressor, that definitely will be a problem. But air volume is definitely something to consider when buying this tool. So I'm definitely happy with the way this performs and cuts when just cutting a shingle independently. What I want to test out is, you know, sometimes we have shingles that come on like metal flashing, whether it's a valley of pipe flashing or whatever it is. I think there are use cases sometimes where we have to cut the shingle while it's on a metal surface without damaging the metal. We want to make sure the shingle can be cut. So I'm curious to see how that's going to look. So let me tell you, first off, when I was cutting this, I was not being careful at all. I was kind of putting downward pressure, which generally if I were to do this on the field, I would be careful as not to puncture the metal. But in order to get a real real test, I want to make sure, you know, if my guys were using this on the field, what's the probability of them puncturing this piece of metal? So let's see what kind of damage we might have caused. Yeah, I can say it's minimal. I mean, nothing. It's just pretty much like a surface scratch the same thing would happen if you would run just a blade across it there's no indentation nothing of that sort i think that can be largely credited 
to the hook shape of the blade, being that the top of this is dull, the inside was sharp. So even if I just touch it like this, it is not gonna cut me, nor will it puncture the metal. So I'm pretty happy with that. The last thing I wanna test on this tool is how many cuts we can get out of a single blade. Each blade costs around $2.30, at least that's what I found on Amazon. A pack of 12 will sell selling for I think around 20 some dollars, $28 or so. So I wanna see how many cuts we can get. So far we've done, I would say probably around 20 cuts out of this blade. I'm gonna keep on cutting until it gets pretty much dull and inefficient to see if it's worth the money we paid for it. All right, we, we went about 200 cuts and I called it, even though I think I could have cut more, you could see the blade, I don't wanna to touch it because it's extremely hot right now. The blade is definitely getting this form, it's no longer a hook, it's kind of like plateaus out here and that was causing two things, it was causing the cutting to slow down, so it wasn't cutting as smooth as it was before. As I was cutting, sometimes the blade would kind of slip out or slip up and I think that has to do with the lack of the hook right there in the curve. Like I'm sure you can get more than two, out of 200 cuts per blade, but in my opinion, 200 cuts is plenty. Don't be greedy, it's only $2 in some sense. I think on an average roof, you're probably gonna go through one or two blades at max. So you're talking about three to $5 per roof, definitely a worthwhile investment. Bottom line, I really like this tool. I think for professionals, it's definitely a worthwhile investment, or at least it's worth testing out yourself. You know, if you're in the trade, get one, test it out. If it works out, let me know how you like it. Let me know if you've been using a pneumatic shingle cutter in the comments below. And if you have a different brand that you prefer, I'll definitely like to hear it. This is the first one that I've tried personally, and I think I'll personally give this two thumbs up.